Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have x squared plus the quantity x over x minus 1 squared equals 8 and we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods as well as show you a graph at the end. Let's get started. So for my first method I'm going to go ahead and expand everything. So I'll be getting x minus 1 quantity squared at the bottom, which I can write as x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I'll make a common denominator to basically multiply everything by x squared. That's going to give me x to the fourth power minus 2x cubed plus x squared plus another x squared that comes from here all over x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 8. Let's go ahead and combine like terms in the numerator and then multiply uh, across or actually it's cross multiply not across so we're going to multiply these two things and that's going to give us 8x squared minus 16x plus 8. Let's put everything on the same side Let's make sure we get it right. x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus x squared plus x squared. Okay, good. And then we should have the positive 16x and then minus 8 equals 0. Okay, cool. Now, what do we have, right? So this is a quartic equation. And how do you think we solve quartic equations? Well, there's a quartic formula, but I don't think you want to use that. It's quite complicated. So there's another method. If there are any rational roots, then we can use what's called rational root theorem, which we can abbreviate as RRT. And RRT basically depends on the factors of the constant divided by the factors of uh, the leading coefficient. But in this case, the leading coefficient is 1, so we don't have to worry about it. We're only going to be looking at factors of negative 8, or just 8. So we can basically look at plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, and plus minus 8 as candidates. These are candidates, which means we have to plug them in and test it out. And then if they work, that gives us one of the solutions from factor theorem, for example. Can x be 1? We have to test it out. 1 minus 2 minus 6 plus 16 minus 8. Obviously, this is not going to be 0, so x equals 1 is not a solution. Is x equals negative 1 a solution? It's not going to work. Is x, is x equals 2 a solution? Let's test it out. 16 minus 16 minus 24 plus 32 minus 8. Notice that this is 0, this is positive 24, and this is also 0, so the whole thing is 0, which means x equals 2 is a solution to this quartic equation. It's only one of the solutions though, right? So what we need to do now is to use factor theorem, which says if x equals 2 is a solution to this polynomial equation, then x minus 2 is a factor. Because that's the only way that x equals 2 is going to work, right? I mean, it, there's going to be other factors too, but, but it just says x minus 2 is one of the factors. And then by using long division or polynomial division or otherwise, we can go ahead and divide this by x minus 2. There's a really cool method that I frequently use for these kinds of equations that uses basically breaking down every term. So since x minus 2 is a factor, if you multiply it by x cubed, for example, you're going to get x to the fourth minus 2x cubed, which means this must be the two consecutive terms. And I do have that, actually. So I can kind of start with that, x to the fourth minus 2x cubed. But then I need to continue with minus 6x squared, which obviously needs to follow by positive 12x, because that's the only way you're going to get an x minus 2. And then do I have 12x? I have 16x. So I have to add 4x to make 16x. And then minus 8, we're done. And now you're just going to factor by grouping x cubed times x minus 2 minus 6x times x minus 2 plus 4 times x minus 2. You see what I'm getting at? And then x minus 2 will be factored out. And we're going to get x cubed minus 6x 
plus 4 is equal to 0. We got a cubic, which is nice because it's missing x squared, so that's cool. It's a, I think, depressed cubic, that's what we call it. Anyways, um, we already know x equals 2. To find the other solution, we have to solve the cubic. And then you can kind of go into solutions. Obviously, you can still use rational root theorem if there are rational roots, hopefully. And quick check is actually going to show you that x equals 2 is a solution again. <laughs> so that's kind of like a double root, which you couldn't tell initially, obviously. But then you can arrange these terms, so on and so forth. And eventually, you're going to get uh, the solutions. Let me go ahead and, you know, just show you the second method. Uh, but you can continue divide by x minus 2, or you just break it down. And then you'll get the other factor, which is a quadratic. It has two roots, easy to solve, case closed. Make sense? OK, that will be easy. So the, le the rest is left as an exercise for you. Okay, I know people hate that, so forgive me for that. It's a joke. So for our second method, we're going to use, and if uh, you need help with the rest of this, please let us know in the comment section. I'm pretty sure somebody will um, answer that question. If not, I'll answer it happily. So the second method uses a beautiful method that I've been using in lots of lots of videos. And you know it, if you've seen some of my videos, I always talk about it. It's called substitution, yay. Substitution is awesome because it really simplifies things. So let's go ahead and call this expression y and any variables, fine. But this gives us an equation in two variables. But don't worry about it because we're gonna be able to solve it. Because we're gonna come up with another equation. And that comes from our assumption. Our assumption was this, and if you go ahead and cross multiply, you get x equals xy minus y, let's add y, and this gives us x plus y equals xy. Great, now these two together gives us a beautiful system. And this is a quadratic system, very easy to solve, and how do you solve it? I'm going to show you. We're going to use some identities. The first one is a sum of squares which can't be factored in the real world, in the complex world, obviously. It can be factored. That's another story. But we can write an identity for that. So if you square x plus y, think about it, you'll get x squared plus y squared with an additional term to xy. I want to write it last. So if you subtract 2xy, which is normally in the middle, then you end up with x squared plus y squared. So this is a very helpful identity if you're studying algebra or if you need algebra for something else, make sure you know this. Now, how can I use this information? Well, first of all, from the second equation, let's call this first and this second, I know that x plus y is the same thing as xy. So let's go ahead and set both of these equal to something. How about setting them equal to t? So that I can replace both with t, this gives me t squared minus 2t, or not 2t, equals x squared plus y squared, which is equal to 8. Awesome. So I got a quadratic equation from here. First of all, I, it looks like I'm complicating things because I'm introducing a second variable, but it actually simplifies it because we can use identities. And substitution, again, of course. Substitution is awesome, if you couldn't tell so far. Now... Here, this is factorable, obviously, right? And we can write it as t minus 4, t plus 2 equals 0. And to keep a long story short, from here we get t equals 4. And t equals 4 implies x plus y equals 4 and x, y equals 4. Because remember, t was equal to both. Or if t is negative 2, then you get x plus y equals negative 2. And x, y is equal to negative 2. So this gives you two more systems. And if you solve these, we don't care about the... Uh, uh, y value at all because y is that dummy variable. We basically get x equals 2 from here because 2 plus 2 is 4. And then from here we get x equals negative 1 plus root 3 and negative 1 minus root 3. So basically, looks like we have three solutions, but this was a cortic because remember, we remember if um, the 2 was a double root, therefore we seem to have three solutions, but two is repeated. Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph and we'll finish up. Here's our function intersected by the horizontal line, y equals 8 at 
three points. One of them is a tangent line, which indicates double root. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.